Hello there and welcome to another video by the MXQ project. So today's video is about running a Linux Ubuntu or Debian on the Amlogic S905 MXQ Pro. So one of these boxes. So all you guys out there with a S912 box, so maybe you've got a Beelink GT1 like this one here, then this video is also relevant to you. Now the only reason I'm not going to be showing you how to install it onto an S912 box today is because I don't have a micro SD card. I've only got a full size one. So full size SD cards obviously are going to be booted from the SD card tray on the side of this MXQ Pro. The GT1 has a micro SD card slot so I can't actually use it. Or oh, I do have one actually but it's not quite fast enough to actually run Linux properly. You need a class 10 SD card with at least um, 40 to 80 meg transfer speeds and the one I've got is well I think it's about 4 meg so it's going to be no good at all. Anyway if you have got a S912 keep watching because this video is still relevant to you guys. I will probably recap this for the Beelink GT1 at some point maybe next week or something like that when I get hold of a micro SD card. So this video is going to start off and it's going to show you where to get your files from then we're going to burn it to an SD card then we're going to change something called a DTB file and then we're going to boot it from out the side of our MXQ Pro. So we've got a couple of versions of uh, Linux available. We've got Ubuntu Mate, we've got Debian and we've also got servers as well if you guys want to be using the server based operating systems. So let's move on to the first part now where we'll go and grab those files. Okay, let's go and grab those files. So let's go to Yandisk, and that's where Balbs150, the developer behind this, stores all his files for the S905, S912, etc., Debian, and Ubuntu. So go to this link here, I'll leave the link in the description, of course, and you can download Debian Jesse as a server or as a desktop. You can also get Ubuntu Xenium Mate, again, server as well. So whichever you want to decide to get. You can also uh, find out lots more about this development by going over to Freak Tab. You can also go to Ambient and um, etc. There's also more information probably here as well. Maybe I'll miss out certain parts, maybe for certain boxes, etc. Like for example, you can install to EMC, they're there. So, you also need Win32 Disk Imager as well. You can get that from us. Again, I'll leave the links in the description. That's just to literally write the operating system to an SD card. So grab your Ambient image, whichever you want to download, and what you've got to do is you'll need to unzip it. So again, I'll leave a tool in the description if you don't have an unzip tool. And then install that Win32 disk executable program. Now's a good time to insert your SD card into your computer, ready to go. And then you can select it, just as shown under device. Then you can select your image file that we've just unzipped, so select the little folder I've shown and then select your ambient image. So there's that my ambient image just there and then click open and then click write and confirm. This may take a while so just leave it alone for a couple of minutes. So once it's finished you need to open up that SD card uh, as shown, so we need to go into this SD card and we need to change something called a DTB file. Well, we need to actually put a DTB file into this root folder here. So at the bottom, you'll see a bunch of folders called DTB. Go into there, and for the MXQ Pro, we need this folder here, file even. So we need this file, so we need to right and click, copy, and paste it into here with all the other files just here. Then we need to rename that file to DTB.image. Now, you guys with a S912, you can, you probably be seen in there that there was a file for a GT1. Uh, and you guys can go straight ahead. I'll probably recap it again at some point. Now, we need to open up the Ambient first run file. That will be, again, in a bunch of files. And you need to have a read through this. And you need to change what's relevant to you. Now, you don't need to change it if you don't want to. It's just the file for the first run. So it... Um, governs things like Wi-Fi and stuff like that have a read through it and change what you need to change and then we can move on to the next part where I'll show you 
how to boot it from your MXQ Pro or whichever device. Now, those DTB files that we've just moved over, I can't guarantee that they're gonna work, but it is a case of just trying individually each one until you've got one that works properly for you. So hopefully you've got to this menu. So this is the initial boot script for Ambien uh, Ubuntu Mate. Now, if you can't get to this, if your boxes doesn't want to do it, then you're going to have to change your DTB files. Now that previous section of the video where we went through the DTB files, you would have seen me go into that folder that's named DTB underscore 3.14, I think it was. So 3.14 is just referring to the kernel. Um, don't bog yourself down with that. It's that, Just ignore that bit. But you would have noticed three folders there. So there's three folders. And I've me uh, messed up a little bit. Um, I forgot that the, f the DTB file that I need isn't in that folder. So the one I've shown that I've used, uh, I don't use. You would notice there's a folder called just DTB. Now, if you go into there, there is another file and it's named exactly the same as the one I've shown using, but it's in this folder. Now, stay with me on this because it, I can totally understand if you're totally confused at this point because I've made this mistake and I've totally forgotten that I need to go into that folder and get that DTB file. So you guys, if it's just not working at all for you, you're going to have to find some patience from somewhere and literally try every single DTB file. Now, there's certain ones that you don't have to try because they're aimed at the S905X and the S912. There's a DTB file in there called the GT1. Obviously, that's for S912 users, so you don't need to bother with that. My best advice is just find a couple of hours spare if you, if you can and just go through them all, really. Um... You might need to toothpick before actually doing this. You might not need to toothpick. So when I mean toothpick, you need to find the reset button. So that's on the MXQ Pro, that's in the AV port. Or if you've got an S912 device, it's maybe on the bottom. I know on the Beelink GT1, it's under the bottom. And it's quite a thin hole and you have to get something really thin to get in there. Uh, you might need to do that. You might not. It might just automatically boot. Now, Balbs150 is the guy to ask about the ins and outs of certain aspects of certain hardware. I certainly don't know. Oh, I don't have uh, that much S905 hardware. I've only got this MXQ Pro. I've only got a Beelink GT1 S912. So they're only the, they're the only hardware I've got to test this on, really. So you might come across all sorts of different challenges when you're trying to boot this. So my best advice is just to go through all the DTB files slowly, trying them all out, give them a couple of minutes to actually boot, do a bit of research, find out which box you've got, which hardware. So you, you might have an MXQ Pro like me, but you might have a different board version, so you might need to use a different DTB file. Now, I'll leave a link in the description to the exact DTB file I've, I've been using, so I won't leave a link, obviously, I'll... Um, Actually, I might be even upload it for you, just so it, I'm absolutely clear which one I've been using. So I don't, so the, that this video isn't too confusing for you guys, and I'll try my best. But I'll leave a link. I'll, I'll maybe just write exactly which where to go to get the exact ETP file I'm using. Obviously, there was those files I actually stored on the ambient image that you're writing to your SD card, and hopefully this is all making sense. So hopefully you've got to this screen, and if you have, we can proceed forward and have a look at uh, Ubuntu running on uh, MXQ Pro. Right, so the next part of this process is we need to log in. Now ignore this, me making a mess on the screen. So the login, standard login for Linux is root. And the password is just one, two, three, four. Now it'll ask you again for that current Linux password. Unix password even, so type again, one, two, three, four, and then type in a new password. So make sure you make a note of this because you're gonna be using this for the system. There we go, so it's gonna ask you for your phone name, so I'll just type in Matt. Um, it'll do a few more copying of the files. Then it'll ask you for that password again, but you've just made up just before. And then retype it again. 
And then it will just ask you a bit, a bit of information. I'm not too interested in that. And then it will ask you, is the information correct? And you just type Y for yes. And then the system will start configuring itself. Just give it a few more seconds. Now it says it's starting desktop environment. So welcome to the Ubuntu Mate desktop running on the MXQ Pro. Now I've connected an Ethernet cable in, I'm not bothering with Wi-Fi just at the moment. It might work on yours, I think it will depend purely on what Wi-Fi chipset you've got installed on your box. Now let's have a look, let's have a play around and I'll show you how good it is. And so let's load up the internet to see how it runs. Now, it's not, please remember, uh, it's not going to be amazing. It's not going to be the like, top-end laptop performance. But when we tried it the other day, it was pretty decent. It was, it was certainly worth, worth a shot. So we we'll just sort of no thanks for that. Let's go to YouTube. Let's see how that runs. Let's go to my channel, Skew Project. Let's play. Now I've put my TV on mute so it doesn't interfere with the sound, but it definitely works. The sound's running through my TV just fine. Um, and as you can see, it's running. It's running really well. It's nice and smooth. My internet's not the best, so it doesn't stream that great. But yeah, I think I think the performance of the S905 over, say, the S805. We've done a video of that, of that just the other day, actually, which is just here to show here it's significant significantly trying to say that word better a lot better performance <clears throat> now i haven't got time now to actually install anything onto this but when we were playing around with it the other day we found we could install cody that run okay we installed a couple of games we installed quake 3 i think it was it was the linux version of quake 3 and that 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 run really well um, I'll just minimize that. So we've got like, we see LibreOffice is pre-installed on it. Now the one issue I've got with LibreOffice running on this, um, I mean we had this issue, issue back when we first um, had the S85 port done back last year. Now for some reason I can't get the other programs to open. I'm not sure why that is. Do we need to install them? I've never really actually tried to bother trying to see what the issue was there but you can't seem to open them I don't know why that is um, you must need to reinstall them or something like that but yeah there's there is um, this is writer um, yeah you can just obviously save it and stuff like that and very good um don't save that. Uh these are some test MP4s. As you can see it's a little bit slow when when doing certain things. I think it's probably because the internet's open. If we look at Task Manager, it's used a lot of the RAM. 
CPU though. High high RAM usage. I think that'll be down to running YouTube at the same time. These are just been a pest, probably just need restarted. The margin. Shut them down. Try and shut these down. Cause Yeah, I think it needs restarted. Yeah, so those test MP4s don't seem to want to play. I'm not sure why that is. Um, they were playing the other time I was trying this desktop. Um, just ignore that. But anyway, let's. Uh, I'll show you a bit more about maybe loading some web pages up. Um, let's just show you sort of how fast you can do it. And see what I mean? That, that was quick. That was really impressive, that was. I mean, the S8 of 5... It's almost there, but it's not 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 quite as fast at loading up certain things. Um, obviously, you don't want to be pushing it too hard. So, so like eBay. So it's asking <laughs> the system's asking for the mobile version. Um, don't want the mobile version. We want the classic site. And still it's requesting the classic the mobile version. See it's redirecting me to the mobile. Um no oh, ignore that. So hopefully yeah, so hopefully that's given you an idea of um what to expect from it. It's So I'm trying to copy this to the internal memory. Uh, the command is sudo space forward slash root forward slash install dot sh and then asks you to confirm it and then it says yes. Now I have no idea if this is going to work or not. We shall see. So I'll come back in a second with the results. So I copied the operating system to the internal storage on the MXQ. I don't really recommend doing that because you've not got a lot of storage on the MXQ Pro. I mean, you've only got eight gig. The operating system takes up, well, more than half of that. So, but um, I'd probably just say it's about the same performance, really. Um, I was running it on an SD card. I mean, if you've got a really fast SD card, you could probably outperform the actual onboard storage. So. You know, it's. Uh, I think. I think um, putting it onto internal storage isn't really the best thing, best way forward. But you know, it's personal preference, isn't it? Um, so can't get those test MP4. Oh, here we go. There we go. It's working now. But yeah. There we go, That's uh, that, I think that concludes that section of the video. I think you've got a good idea of what sort of performance, what you can do with it. Um, you can certainly install things onto it. Cody goes onto it just fine. Um, you can install games onto it. Uh, and yeah, just use it as a Linux system. So there we have it. That is Ubuntu Mate running on an MXQ Pro with the S905 processor. So if you've got the S905X, it'll run on that. If you've got the S912, again, it'll run on that. Now, we have to come back to the DTB files. That's going to be the part which confuses a lot of people. It confused me all, all those months ago when I first came across this. Changing them in and out can be a bit of a pain. And you need a lot of patience with it. So, it's just a case of going through them all. Try them all out. Maybe look on, it on the FreakTab forum. See what people have said about certain pieces of hardware. Maybe take your box apart and get more of an idea what board type it is. And someone out there might be able to just answer straight away. You need that DTB file and it'll work just fine. Now, I can't guarantee that those files will work. Remember, there's so much hardware out there built by Chinese manufacturers. And there's no guarantee that Barbers has come across the right board file for you. That device tree. So, that's just the way it is. That's just the way... Uh, open source development is for these sort of devices. devices. So all credit from this video on all the
development around this goes to Barbers 150. He's done an amazing job when it comes to this. He's released quite a few versions since last year and each one has just been better and better and better. So if you're watching this bulbs or if someone knows bulbs, thank you very much. It's brilliant, it really is. So all credit goes to you. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's probably been a, quite a long winded video. It's gone on quite a bit. There's a lot of information to get across. There's a lot of information I've probably been missed out. So I'm gonna leave the links in the description to all the forums, the Ambient Forum where you can find out for, uh, where Balbs is and um, the Freak Type Forum as well. You can go over there if there's any information I've missed out. Um, there probably is. <laughs> um, but anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and hopefully you've got it to boot on your device. Uh, we've got the msqproject.com website, so that's getting updated all the time with all the new developments and stuff like that. I'll be uploading this video to that website as well. We've got the forum, the MSQ Project forum. Um, we've also got the a Facebook group as well. It's quite a big community, lots of really knowledgeable people over there. So MSQ Project, I'll leave, again, I'll leave all the links in the description. So thanks for watching guys and uh, the next video will be the S912 running this. Hopefully I can get hold of a micro SD card to actually show you uh, if there's any performance increases with that processor. And yeah, so thanks for watching guys and we shall see you on the next one.